So cesium, it's a very reactive alkali metal, sort of getting on down in the periodic table. You've got to be very careful with cesium because it's very, very reactive. It's very, very expensive as well. And when you're trying to buy it, you've got to be very careful because there's a couple of different spellings, you see. On our box here, we've got cesium with an A. Cesium is one of the heaviest um, alkali metals. The alkali metals are the elements like sodium, potassium, in group one of the periodic table. And sometimes it's spelt without an A, and in fact, the RUPAC spelling is without an A. But I prefer to use this because I think it's a, a little bit more novel and a little bit nicer. So, this is, like you say, this is like a, a careful box. Then now we're going to open the box and you'll see that inside the, the, the foam padding is a glass ampule of, of the cesium itself. And you can see that the cesium is a wonderful gold colour. Okay, and you can see this is sealed in a glass ampule under an argon atmosphere because the argon is very unreactive. It's not going to react with anything. And it's stopping the cesium react with moisture or with any air. Okay. Now the cesium itself is a really quite fantastic metal because depending on where you are in the world and the type of periodic table that you're, you're looking at, sometimes it might actually be reported, reported as a liquid and sometimes as, as, as a solid or a typical metal. And that's simply because the melting point of cesium is about 27 degrees. You know, so that's really quite close to, to room temperature in very many laboratories and, um, and in very many sort of environments, perhaps like in Spain or perhaps in other areas which are not nice and warm. So if I stand here long enough and I heat the cesium with my hands, which obviously this is body temperature, hopefully we might be able to see that the cesium itself will melt. So we'll be able to see liquid and solid cesium. Okay? So you know that the, the cesium itself has already started to melt. So you can see that the liquid and it's starting to become mobile within the glass itself. Now we have to be very, very careful when we're handling this because if we break the glass, it reacts very, very vigorously with water. So the perspiration, the sweat on my hands is enough to make this really quite an exothermic and a very, very dangerous chemical to work with. Cesium, because it's at the bottom of the periodic table, has very large atoms. And this gives rather interesting properties to the materials made out of cesium. So the cesium itself is very, very expensive as well. Our conservative estimate is that this sample is worth somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds. Here is a really battered piece of cesium bromide. And you can actually bend it. Can you see? I can bend this. Whereas this stuff is so brittle and the bending is caused or the fact that you can bend it is caused by the fact that the atoms are much bigger. Cesium and bromine are both large, so you can... Sp <coughs> and if you press hard, we should be able to make it go flat again. So there, it's restored. And the reason I've got this material is that cesium bromide is a very good material for <coughs> letting through infrared light, because the atoms are large, they vibrate very slowly, so you can, <coughs> they don't absorb infrared light strongly. Now we'll put the cesium back in its box very safely. I'd love to do the experiment where we put it in water. Shucks. <laughs>